Sometimes they're so engrossed in foraging for their food that they have to be called away. They pick up the scent of the mealworms and hear the calls. As the ball is rolled about, the worms tumble out, one by one. It's much better than being spoon-fed. Keeping the bears interested and healthy is Carol's job. But the aims of the Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust, based on Jersey, are wider than that. The best way to conserve a plant or animal is to preserve its natural environment. This needs both education and enforcement in the countries where the bears are found. And we can all help by only buying wood from sustainable sources. We should take off our rose-tinted spectacles and see the world as it is. A perilous place for an Andean or spectacled bear, as they're also known. This island is at the same latitude as Moscow, but the Gulf Stream moderates its climate. And with about 1,000 kilometers of coastline, it should be a perfect haven for our next imperiled creature. The Isle of Skye, the largest of the Inner Hebridean Islands, lying off the northwest coast of Britain. And, armed with binoculars, Paul and Grace Yoxon are looking for some very secretive inhabitants. They were once found from the Arctic to the Mediterranean and from Ireland to the borders of Asia. But today, there are only a few seals out in the bay. What the Yoxons are searching for are Eurasian otters. Like the Andean bears, they're on the worldwide vulnerable list and are so shy that often the only trace of them are otter sprints or droppings. Here on Skye, the wild otters feed on sea fish, but they wash themselves in freshwater pools near the coast because the salt water affects the waterproofing of their coats. One of the aims of the International Otter Survival Fund is to check what they're catching and eating out in the ocean, and any fish bones found in the sprints will give them valuable information. Apart from fish, they eat crustaceans, and even frogs and voles caught inland. Paul and Grace also receive up to eight injured otters every year. This is Olivia, who came to them with a broken pelvis. The reading on these scales shows how she's progressing. She's putting on weight, which is encouraging. She's also become more mobile and is able to run on the grass. The rehabilitation program has been very successful and over 90% of their patients have been released back into the wild, though Olivia will probably not be one of them. When she arrived here, she was already very tame. Otters usually stay as far from humans as possible, but Olivia is in no rush to escape from her carrying cage. Otters are quite fastidious feeders. They don't just tear at the fish, but chew methodically, slowly scaling and stripping off the flesh from the tail upwards. <laughs> 